Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. This video is going to be all about Parkinson's disease. We're going to start off by talking about the cardinal signs of Parkinson's disease, and then we'll take a look at specifically how Parkinson's disease impacts the function of the basal nuclei, both with the indirect pathway and the direct pathway. Parkinson's disease is characterized as a progressive destruction of the cells of the substantia nigra. The substantia nigra is a piece of the basal nuclei, and it's responsible for generating a lot of dopamine. And that dopamine is able to modulate the functions of both the direct and indirect pathways of the basal nuclei. We reviewed this in the previous video, but here is the general structure of the basal nuclei. And you can see at the very bottom here, this nucleus in orange, this is the substantia nigra. You can see here that it lies directly inferior to the subthalamic nucleus, another cluster of cell bodies. But the substantia nigra are the cells specifically that are progressively being destroyed in Parkinson's disease. So Parkinson's disease is often thought of as a genetic disorder. In fact, for Michael J. Fox here on the right, it was a genetic disorder. Uh, but in some cases, it can be caused by repetitive chronic trauma to the head, which is most likely the cause of Parkinson's disease in the late Muhammad Ali, who you can see here on the left. Michael J. Fox's case was most likely genetic. Muhammad Ali's was most likely environmental, although it could have had some genetic component. Remember that genetics is the gun, but environment pulls the trigger. Okay? Now, regardless of how it's acquired, Parkinson's disease is going to be associated with four major cardinal signs. And we remember these with the acronym TRAP, T-R-A-P. The T is for tremor or resting tremor. This is a tremor that, of course, occurs when the person is not moving that particular part of the body. Normally, the resting tremor will initially manifest in the hands. This picture down here is meant to show that the hands are shaking. Um, as long as the hands are not doing anything, they're just sitting there, they will exhibit that resting tremor. So this is different than an intention tremor. An intention tremor is a tremor that you only see when that part of the body is moving. So for someone who had an intention tremor in the hands, that would only be apparent once they started moving the hands to grasp for, for something. And that would be more indicative of cerebellar pathology. But the resting tremor is what we see when there's basal nuclei pathology in Parkinson's disease. The R is for rigidity, and this is where muscles become tight and they do not move well. So this is a characteristic posture in someone with Parkinson's disease. You'll actually see the shoulders rounded forward. Uh, that's because the pectoralis major and minor muscles become really rigid. And also you'll see this very large kyphosis and this forward head posturing. This is because the mid and upper T-spine and even the uh, posterior cervical muscles also become rigid and tight. And it's very hard to get them out of this position. And a lot of times the rigidity will become more and more and more pronounced. Okay? Um, in general, as we mentioned, the rigidity is more pronounced in the back and also in the shoulder girdle as well, but it could also be in the pectoral muscles. The A is for akinesia. Now, technically, bradykinesia will come first. Bradykinesia is where they have a difficulty initiating movement due to impaired power generation. The bradykinesia we can see really well in the festinating gait in someone with Parkinson's disease. And so they have this shuffling, short-stepped gait that results from impaired initiation of movement. And so rather than a clean stride where you have all the events of the gait cycle, it really manifests as really short steps forward, which is basically the shuffling, okay? And then we have the P, which is postural instability. This is not seen as early as the other three cardinal signs, resting tremor, rigidity, and bradykinesia going to akinesia. This is seen a little bit later, but it really just involves impaired coordination of movements, which can cause loss of balance, which can cause falls. One thing of note about falls, even though it's not true in 100% of cases, the most common direction of falls is going to be backwards, posterior. So if they're walking forward, they're not going to fall as much there. If they're sidestepping, not going to fall as much there. It's when they're actually walking posteriorly, walking backwards, that's where you actually see a lot of these falls. And even if they're just standing up straight and not moving, uh, the falls usually will be backwards, but not always. 
Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.